Hi, and welcome to Carving to Powder Transitioning Series, Episode 6. Today I'll be talking about unweighting, the fourth and the last pillar of powder skiing. The unweighting is extremely important for powder skiing. Your skis are evenly loaded and connected together. It is essentially a monoski, and during the turn they are rotating in the snow, snaring it, or side sliding, side sliding if you prefer. First three primary skills of powder skiing. How do you initiate the turn? The only way to initiate is unweighting. There are three ways to unweight. The modern carving turn, which is totally non-applicable, and also unweighting up and unweighting down. First, couple words about modern carving turn unweighting. This is... Imagine you're turning, and you're ending the turn, and this is a fall line. And so this is just the modern carving turn. Boom! And you go this way. And you carve that way. And there is no really unweighting. You just draw the center of mass without on the same height. Boom! And you just turning another way. We will not be doing this. Let me repeat again, it is totally outside of our scope because it's not applicable to powder. You just throwing the center mass across your skis into direction of neutron, but this is for advanced carvers and has nothing to do with skiing and powder. So I am not talking about it anymore. And waiting up is the most common way. 95% of skiers do it without knowing that it is called this way. You compress slowly all the way towards the end of the turn and then in the very end you expand up. You can even add the hand movement up. You can jump. At the highest point your skis are not connected to the snow. You can rotate those. And this is we turn, 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 sit down. This is our fall line. And then we stand up. We can even jump. We can jump very high. Or we can do it very subtle. And we do it very subtle. But the skiers are disconnected for one brief second. And we, because they are disconnected, we can turn. Right? So we can initiate the turn. Because we unweighting up. And as we unweighting up, our center of gravity goes up and skis are not connected to the snow. Okay? One more thing about unweighting up. Sometimes you may hear this, you may heard this in some videos, that when you unweighting up, they even suggest you bring your hand up. Woo! It's almost like a jump. It's like that. But the whole idea is to disconnect your ski from the snow and then the apex of your jump to start to initiate the turn. Unweighting down is the third option. The timing is very different from unweighting up. As unweighting up, it starts in the very end of a turn, but your feet are completely straight.
Okay, now I'm showing you unweighting down. So imagine that this is the end of my turn. This is my fall line. It's not perpendicular, but I want to turn. It's like 45 degrees or maybe even less. So I'm skiing like skis together, sliding, pushing my tails out, and my feet are straight. So what I do, I do very abruptly, sit down. And as I do it very abruptly, the connection between ski and surface disappears. So the point is I do it very abruptly. So I either sit down or I personally think about it that I'm pushing both my heels together simultaneously towards my back. This allows my ski to start moving and now I'm facing down in this, in this position and then I'm starting to push other way around. And as I push other way around, other way around. This is again straight feet, both straight feet. And again I sit down very abruptly and I change the direction. And again my feet are straight. So the difference is that when I am unweighting up, I load, 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 load the spring and from this position I jump. When I am waiting down, I am straight feet and straight legs and then I do a back squat, skis are not connected and they start initiating the turn. Okay. You can think about am waiting down as pulling the heels towards your butt. Your legs are straight in the end of the turn. And as soon as you pull the heels, the pressure on the snow is minimal and you start the new turn. Notice how your knees are bent when your skis are pointing down and from there you straighten your legs in the opposite direction. Also, the way I think about it that my upper body is stable, no movement, and I retract my heels and then push the tails out. So I kind of move my heels towards my bout and out and back again. So the difference between unweighting up and down is that when you unweight up your legs are compressed in the end of the turn, while in the unweighting down your legs are totally straight in the end of the turn. Either way, no contact with snow in the beginning of the turn as soon as you start unweight. So, for powder skiing is a, an obvious unweighting up, almost subtle unweighting down. Advantage of unweighting up, you can jump totally disconnecting from snow. Unweighting down, there is a limit. You must be very fast and it is for very short time. Okay, I'm waiting down only for good skiers. It actually separates good skier from bad and requires different muscles. I'm waiting down is employed in the moguls, for example, by the pros, and it is before the bump, not when the bump starts already to hit you. I'm waiting down is intimately related to stable upper body which is a sign of a class in itself. I myself, I am trying very hard, but I am very far from my goals. I'm waiting down works extremely well in powder on flat sections, because you want, you want to point your skis more towards the fall line all the time, and want, don't want to lose precious speed. So your 
pull your heels towards the bat and rotate tails underneath and your center of gravity goes down the fall line more or less. You can practice this on groomed runs and you will find that you should do it on flat sections only, otherwise you will attain quite a speed. And you will notice that this engages completely different muscles. And in the last episode I'll talk about how to exercise those in the summer. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode number 7, which will be a detailed look into the common myths related to powder skiing. And if you liked the video, please click the subscribe button. Your subscribing click will go a long way. Thank you.